Welcome back to Monday Musings, a casual conversation about culture and theology. I'm Justin Ely. And I'm Daniel Chen. We're just a couple guys talking about some stuff. We are two pastors talking about life from a biblical worldview. How was that for our second (laughs) tagline? We debated this all week, and I think we're going to choose to keep the original tagline, but then add add, another tagline. Add this, and it really reflects my personality and your personality. Right. I want to emphasize just how great and learned I am. Yeah. And you want to show the humility of we're just a couple guys talking about some stuff. <laughs> no, it's just uh, I feel like I just I talk like a second grader and you talk like you have <laughs> been to college, you know. And uh, but we were given the advice to let new listeners know that we are pastors and <laughs> I guess on some level are qualified to talk about some of the things we some talk about. Things. Yeah. So, so th- there's uh, you will see, we'll see how long that tagline lasts or, or, you know, just stick around. Uh, but that's what we're exper- experimenting, experimenting with. We are also moving our of the month segment to the end of the podcast. So if you want to hear about our listener of the month, you're going to have to listen to the whole thing or just, you know, fast forward to the end. Stay towards the end. Yep. But today, we are talking about the topic. This was uh, brought to us by Nathan Baker, a multi-time listener of the month, I believe. He is, yes. Uh, about the topic of soulmates. So, it, you know, is the concept of soulmate, is, is that biblical? Yeah. Um, so what is a soulmate, Daniel? You know, the, the way we define it in our culture is it's like, you know, you're 15 and you believe— that there's only one person out there for you. Right. There's only one person out there for you to marry that is like specifically picked for you and you got to sort through all of the other, I guess, you know, we're both dudes, all the other girls right. that you meet so that you don't make a mistake and marry someone that's not your soulmate and that you can only be essentially happy if you only marry your soulmate because that was the person meant for you. Right. Like made for you. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we're just, uh, you know, are soulmates biblical? Uh, no. So uh, <laughs> thanks for listening for podcast. us this week, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. Yeah, I think, uh, first of all, I think this is our third hypotheticals. Well, I think we can throw are, are it in. We, are we throwing this into the hypotheticals? I think so. Okay, so this will be part of the hypotheticals, hypotheticals colon soulmate. Yeah. Soulmates, okay. you know, that's like probably what this is going to be called. And is it biblical? No. I guess there's a lot of things <laughs> that we can uh, talk about here, right? Because it, it's like, if you believe in the sovereignty of God, isn't there one person sure. picked for you? You know, it's for the foundation of time. Be- yes, you exactly. To soulmate for you. And... Man, I don't know how I I threw that out there, and now I'm like, man, do I want to open that can of worms? Well, you know, I think (laughs) no, probably. (laughs) So here, here's my like general problem with soulmates. Uh, My my general overarching issue is it essentially teaches you that you are like an incomplete soul unless you are like paired with another person. That's great. And I would say if if there's if there's a true idea of a soulmate and Jesus is your soulmate, then yes. Like right. Augustine's comment, our hearts are restless until they find their rest in thee. Like from that perspective, our soul was designed to worship God. Right. And until you are worshiping God, it doesn't mean he's the second part of your soul. That's definitely heretical. Right. But it was de- it was designed to worship God. And until until you are worshiping the Lord and in fellowship with him, you are living an incomplete life uh, at the minimum, <laughs> wrath of God at, at the maximum and truest sense. But yeah, your your soul isn't functioning the way it was designed to until yeah. you worship him. To to then to put that instead on another human being, that until you're in this relationship with this specific person, you're incomplete. I would say it's actually idolatrous. Like the, the concept of soulmates is actually kind of idolatrous at its root oh absolutely you know for sure i I think because yeah it's the you complete me kind of idea yeah tom cruise yeah great great line right heretical truth yes (laughs) and it's it's kind of like even with you saying that it's like what do you do with people who are single for their whole life because right the the bible you know especially you, you read paul that very much values 
singleness mm-hmm. in, in single people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and the Bible also values marriage and having children. Mm-hmm. Those are all good things. But at different points in the scriptures, it just talks about the benefits of each one. There's right. benefits to all of them. Right. right? And, and so uh, I think to say, what happens to those single people if you believe in soulmates? Right. I feel so mean. Yeah, you just, you know. Or, you know, you have like the divorce rate is like 50% in the U.S. And remarriage is the amount of like second and third marriages. It's like what happens to. Well, and, and I, I actually think this. So the, this concept, number one, I think it's used by people in an unhelpful way pre-marriage to like. <laughs> make the dating process a lot harder than it needs to be. Yes. Because you're like, well, you're a Christian. Our personalities get along. I'm really attracted to you physically. But are you my soulmate? Right. I don't. Everything seems to be going right, but I'm not sure you're my soulmate. So you're in this weird like limbo. I think the concept can be horribly destructive in a marriage. You get in a marriage, things aren't going quite the way you hoped it would or – you're not quite as on fire as you were in the early years, and you start to think, did I marry my soulmate? Yeah. Am I missing out, and there's someone else out there someone else, that, yeah, you know, yeah. and you're like, maybe she's my soulmate. Yeah. And you find a way to justify doing some really sinful things because of this, quote, soulmate idea. So that, I think it's pretty destructive. I think so, too. I, I, I think you will get stuck by, like, a paral- analysis paralysis if you believe in a soulmate. Right. Um, I, I think the other problem too is, you know, uh, uh, I've been watching How I Met Your Mother and mm. it's about Ted Great who show. is looking for his quote unquote soulmate or whatever. And he like goes and he goes to some company that like fight, finds your soulmate <laughs> and he, and he has all these things like my perfect woman is like plays the bass guitar and like loves this book and watches this movie and your favorite song is this and it's all the things he likes and it's like first of all you don't know what you want in a spouse like people just don't yeah uh and secondly i'm like you just described yourself that's what most people's soulmate is like they're just like you like to marry me and it's like man think about how arrogant that is I just the like pers- to say I'm really glad I didn't marry me. <laughs> right? I could only imagine. Yeah. It would not be a great union. Yeah. yeah. You, right? Yeah. It, it, like, I, I think we get stuck into say, like, you make a list of everything you want in a spouse, and you make a list that, like, is reflective of who you think the best you is. Sure. And it's like, what does that really show? How prideful we are. Mm-hmm. Right? That the person that we love is, is ourself. And that's mm-hmm. not the key to marriage. Yeah. Right? The key to marriage is loving God, loving your spouse, then loving yourself. Mm-hmm. Right? And uh, I think that's the other problem with soulmates is that we make this list of who we think our soulmate should be. We wait for this person. That person either doesn't exist or is you. <laughs> right. And is probably not your soulmate. Right. And the most helpful advice I got was when I was 22. And I asked uh, the guy who was discipling me. This question, do you believe in soulmates? And he said, yes and no. He said, uh, not in the way that you're like the culture. Yeah. yeah. He says, but I do believe my wife is my soulmate. You know how I know? I said, how? He goes, because I married her. Bingo. I was like, oh, wait a second. It changed my whole perspective and in, in a good way. And it changed, I mean, it changed my life. Mm-hmm. He's like, how do you, how do I know I was supposed to marry my wife? I married her. Because I married her. <laughs> I, I think that's, yes. I love that. Yes. And and it changes the way, it takes out this like, is there someone else out there? No. Yes. You know how I know? You married her. Because yeah. you made a commitment right. before God and his people yep. that you will love her for a lifetime. Yep. It's, it's easy. Yep. And and I think it's like this, uh, it's like the commitment piece is so important. I and mean, we do premarital counseling and this is what we always tell people besides like, union with christ Mm -hmm. the most important thing in your marriage is commitment Mm -hmm. not any like that's number two like yeah that's the thing that's going to keep it together and you can be assured that your soulmates with your spouse if you are married if you both 
are willing to commit to each other for the rest of your life. Easy peasy. Bingo. And how do you know if you're dating someone you're engaged that you're dating your, or you're looking for someone to date? How do you know you're going to find your soulmate? Well, are they a Christian? Are you willing to commit to them for the rest of your life? I mean, that's overly simplistic, but it kind of kind of comes down to that. But I, I think it is that simple. It's uh, 1 Corinthians 7, 39. A wife is bound to her husband as long as he lives. But if her husband dies, she's free to be married to whom she wishes, only in the Lord. I think those are literally the two qualifications for a Christian. <laughs> Do you want to? Are they a Christian? That's it. And then be committed to that. Yes. Uh, yeah, as, as long as they live, right? Uh, so all the, all the, obviously, sure, sure, like, it would, it's, it's nice to be attractive, you know? That's a good thing. Yep. Uh, it's nice to have personalities that mesh, you know? Uh, and I guess all that fits under the do you wish to, you know? Do you right. want to? Um, but I, I think it's that simple. And I, I think when we add the whole soulmate piece into it, uh, it unnecessarily and unbiblically complicates things. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and going back to the original question of like the God sovereignty, here's my simple answer. <laughs> We've talked about this before. It's an antinomy, which is like a seemingly contradictory Two thing. parallel lines that meet in eternity. Yes. And so you have this idea that it, to me, what's most helpful to me is like perspectives. If yeah. you take, like, the perspective of God from a 30,000-foot view looking down on the world, yes, God is sovereign over all things, and he's not surprised by anything, and he, like, knows who you're going to marry and all this stuff, right? Sure. But from our perspective, like, we're not not 30,000-foot, like, third person looking down. We're first person living your life. Mm-hmm. We're making choices. Yeah. And— like, you know, have a will to choose mm-hmm. and like, uh, and I'm like, those are both true. Yeah. I think compatibilism is probably the yeah. word for it. Yeah. Um, well, I think, you know, it, I, I, yeah, I have like two, like, yeah, could, could I have married someone other than Hillary? I mean, I don't have much game, so I don't know. Um, <laughs> Hillary was the only girl I really dated, so could I? I don't, I'm not so sure. Um, I'll, would I'll I have s- been so heartbroken after the breakup that I just couldn't piece my life together? Quite possibly, you know. And I, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> look. I, I'll just say this because, uh, like, you're painting yourself in a bad picture. But Justin did marry a UGA cheerleader. I did. So. I, I, I got more game than I give myself credit for. <laughs> I, I will say, like, to everyone's surprise in my high school, I got married a month after I graduated college. So, yeah, maybe I should toot my horn a little more than I do. Yeah, I, I, I married uh, a cheerleader, so enough said there. But, uh, yeah, I think, like you said, kind of on this plane, right? Um, yeah, I, I hypothetically could have had other other options I could have chosen differently on like from like God's view it, it, it's interesting it's like God is still governing the universe and he's bringing it to a a specific conclusion and there's like a million trillion domino pieces to that and one of them is me being married to Hillary right so th- there is this like there is a mysterious element of it of like there are things that happen in the universe that wouldn't have happened if I wouldn't have married her. Right. Three human beings would not exist. Right. That do exist. Yep. With souls, you know. So there is a, there's an element of mystery to it. Yeah, there's like a cosmic mystery to it. Yeah. And then there's like the functional practical. Mm-hmm. And I would say let the cosmic be the cosmic and let the practical be the practical. Yeah. So the cosmic mystery that God's working all things out and all this stuff, yeah, that's happening. But you know what? I'm not God. I'm not working all things out. All I can do is I'm just doing my thing. Yeah. 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 And so I would say, like, here's the way I view it. When I was asking myself this question when I was 18 or 22, 
or 25 or whatever before I was married. I got married at 26. Could I have married someone that wasn't my wife, Meredith? I think the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. There are many Christian women out there sure. that I could have married. Yep. And at 26, when I got married, the answer quickly became no. Yep. There was no other person I could marry. Yep. I could only marry. You know how I know? You married her. Because I married her. <laughs> you know, I, I really think we like overcomplicate this. We do. And, and it's like taking that view is just super helpful. Yeah. Is that at the point you get married, you can be 100% sure you were supposed to marry them. Would you say it's okay for, you know, a Christian on Valentine's Day to look at his wife and be like, you know, baby, you're my soulmate? Or do you say, you know what, stop being so unbiblical. Come up with a better romantic uh, term. What do, you, what do you think? I would not say that. But that's just not me. I'm not a baby guy. You're not a baby guy. I'm not a baby guy, and I'm not a soulmate guy. So, you, you know— you know what's worse than being a baby guy? Being a babe guy. Couples that call each other babe, it just, it gets to me. Man, I get what you're saying, and it reminds me of this movie called Hot Rod, and uh, <laughs> Will Arnett is one of the characters. Uh, that's what he says. He's like, babe, babe, no. I just, babe, wait, babe, no. And that's all I can think about. Some couples, that's, that's like all they call each other is babe. And I'm like, you know, a first name every once in a while would, would be nice. <laughs> um, and, you know, if if your feelings are hurt by that. Sorry. Yeah, I don't know. Stop it. Yeah, don't do that in public. <laughs> uh, do that in private. You do whatever you want in private. Yeah. You go babe all you want in your own house. <laughs> I uh, Yeah, I, I don't know. It's kind of like Hillary almost got me this card um, one day for Valentine's Day as a joke, and it was like, um, you know, you know, my my lover let us go off until the morning or something, and it was like Happy Valentine's Day or whatever, and it was quoting from Proverbs seven, which is the story about the seductress adulteress, <laughs> like prostitute that. And it's like, man, talk about taking a Bible verse out of context, you know. <laughs> that is uh, not a, what you intended with the card. So she almost gave it to me as a joke. But, yeah, I probably wouldn't uh, wouldn't come up with a different romantic term. I, yeah, I, I, I say for me, and this is like, man, we're getting into discussion about words. Words are important. And I would say if you're using a word and you mean it in its context that you mean it in, I think it's fine. Right. If you're just saying, I just love you so much, I'm glad you're the only one for me. Yeah. You want to use the word soulmate? That's fine. Yeah. If you're using it in like a, I don't care about God, you're the one who completes me. And I would say the issue isn't the word. The issue is like your heart. That's good. And, and so I would say like, you know, I think for, you know, coming from the reformed crowd, I think we just like. We don't like certain words to be used at all that are outside of like soulmate's not a biblical word, right? Yeah. It's not. Yeah. It's it's outside the Bible. It's like, and I'm like, yeah. If you're using it to convey a meaning that is like sinful, mm -hmm. don't use it. Yeah. If you're using it in a way just to be lovey dovey, you know, babe, babe. way way. It's just you know whatever whatever. If your wife understands and you understand, yeah, you want to say that. I'm not going to say that. You can say that. I'm not going to come after you. Right. Um, and and I think in general with, with most words, it's like defining the word is super important. And then, uh, yeah, and then it's like, okay, well, if you're not using it in a sinful way, that's, that's fine, you know? Right. It's like, so uh, my answer is maybe. <laughs> like, Very clear, I like it. Like yeah. most of where I land, which yeah. is in the middle. And we it's all a know middle you, area. super black and white thinker, you know. <laughs> uh, any other thoughts about soulmates? I, I don't, um, you know, I don't have much to say about it. I would just say, you know, if you're single and you're looking to date, I, I'd love to give, you know, may, maybe you, you can give your advice too. I, I think what I would say is this, like the pro the other problem with soulmates is like, there's this perfect woman or man, you know, if you're depending if you're a woman or a man. For if you're a man, a perfect woman. If you're a woman, a perfect man out there that's like you've built up in your mind that is like perfect in all these ways and you like 
re- are refusing to go on a date even with someone or whatever because they don't pick, you know, the certain attribute. Like they have to be this height and have this hair right, color and right. have this personality and rock climb three times a week and likes this kind of food and watches this show, yeah. you know. It's a bit much. Yeah, yeah. I would say uh, – it's just unrealistic. Mm-hmm. And what I call that in my terms is like every – sometimes when you're single, you aim for the highest ceiling you can. Sure. And what I have given the advice is aim for the highest floor. Hmm. So basically like what is the floor for getting married? They're a Christian. You are like attracted to them yeah. in terms of like you get along with them. Mm-hmm. And then you're attracted to them like physically, that mm-hmm. you think they're like physically attractive. Mm-hmm. And I would say, like, in terms of floors, you should like <laughs> aim for a high floor, you know? Like, <laughs> I love your dating advice. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, are they, do they really love the Lord? Yeah. That's a high floor. Yeah. Right? Um, like, you know, I want them to rock climb with me. Twice a week. That's a high ceiling, but it doesn't really matter. Like sure. the things that are really important are like, like, do they love the Lord? Yeah. How much do they love the Lord? They, do they love the Lord a lot? Do they want to share their faith? Do they have strong character where they're just like love, joy, peace, patience, kind? You know, it's like, yeah. They, do they express those things? Yep. That's a high – shoot for that. Mm-hmm. Shoot for that person. Mm-hmm. Um. In terms of, like, attraction and stuff, a high floor is can they or are they your best friend? Yeah. Yeah. That's a high floor. Like, when Mm -hmm. I say high floor, that's what I mean. Yeah. Like, can they be or are they already your best friend? Mm -hmm. Like, when I give dating advice to college students, date this person. No, I don't know. We're best friends. That's why I'm telling you to date them. (laughs) That's awesome. A marriage is mostly friendship. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, And then with, like, attractiveness, it's like, um, like... I think I way outkicked my coverage in terms of, like, the woman I married, right? Right. Um, but I don't think I'm, like, a terribly attractive – like, you know, I feel, I feel like I, I look fine, <laughs> you know? And I'm, like, realistic. Like, <laughs> like some people are like, I'm going to marry the model or whatever. I'm like, I don't know. It's just, like, when I say floors, I mean just, like, be realistic, you know? <laughs> like, you know, like, uh, like, obviously, if you're, like, you know – I don't know. This might sound mean. If you're like, oh, I can't stand looking at you. I'm like, right. well, maybe uh, you shouldn't marry that person. Like, yeah. you know, that's not going to work. But, you know, like what I mean by high floors is like, yeah, like you're nice to look at. And that covers a <laughs> wide range of, sure. of attractiveness. That's right. all I'm saying. Right. Right. Like if you just have like a pinpoint, like there's only two people out there that are attractive enough for right. me. I'm like, I'm never going to get married. You know, that's right. what I'm saying. You know, as yeah. my uh, grandfather said toward the end of his life, as a lot of dementia had set in, um, you know, you just don't want to be scared when you wake up every morning. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, there's a lot to that. Yes. Bill Pemberton uh, for the win. And, uh, and so what I would say is when you're looking for someone to date, have, look for a high floor. Where, yeah. like, worst case scenario, you married someone that you're fine with looking at, you're, <laughs> is your best friend, and loves the Lord. I'm like, man, that's a great person a great to marry. Thing. Instead of, like, having this, like, pie in the sky. Pie in the, yeah, this this person that you've built up in your mind that probably doesn't exist and mm-hmm. looks a cer- it looks exactly a certain way, has exactly this kind of personality, mm-hmm. has exactly zero of the faults that you think will annoy you like you know what i mean it's just like that's what i mean you know on the um your dating advice is so much better than mine so i really have nothing to offer (laughs) um but i will i I do feel like i have this little thing to offer on the uh because i guess we've transitioned unofficially from you know soulmates to just generic dating advice (laughs) uh on the like loves the lord piece i think two two things for me um, that was like helpful in when when I was dating Hillary is one like looking for evidences of repentance in the person's life. Mm, yeah. So you know, love the Lord can feel so broad, but like I think Martin Luther said, all of the Christian life is repentance. You know, 
So, like, I remember early on in dating just being impressed. There were just a few instances I remembered of, like, evidence of repentance in her life. Which I, I think that's something to look for. It's like, yeah. how does the person repent of sin? Yeah. Um, and when when confronted, like, how do they repent of sin? Um, because we all need to be doing that every day, you know. Another, and this was as a guy dating a girl, like, and and you got to be careful with this one because like, if you're someone's boyfriend, you are not their spiritual leader, uh, but as their husband, you would be. So like. It's kind of the already but not yet. That's the weird thing about dating. Yeah. But I think it's fair to, like, as a guy, like, how does this girl respond to spiritual initiative that I take? Sure. You know? And I just remember— And if you're a guy, show some spiritual initiative. Yeah. I say that. Yeah. One of the, one of the um, most helpful things that, that a guy discipling me told me when I was dating Hillary is he said, you should be so intentional— that she should never be surprised by the next step that you take. Mm. She should know it's coming. Yeah. And so I was like overly awkward, intentional, like when we were going on some dates <clears throat> to where I eventually said, you know, Hillary, we've uh, been on several dates and um, I, I, uh, I hope you know that I am pursuing you for a relationship. And she laughed at me. She was like, yeah, it, it it's been pretty obvious, you know, <laughs> but I think that's what you want. Like you want to be so intentional that there are no surprises, but yeah, the, the, like, uh, if you're a guy, is it a woman that is open to, again, you're not, you're not leading her spiritually. You're just dating, but is there that like demeanor? And I just remember early on when we were dating, Hillary was, um, it was, she's also older. So I was a sophomore. She was a senior. Oh man dated someone older and a cheerleader. Uh, she was deciding on grad school. So she was applying to different grad schools. And I, she was trying to figure out how do I decide? You know, I got these options. And it was a throwaway comment. I, I said something like, you know, um, I found in my life before big decisions, fasting and prayer is a, is a good way to go. And it, I wasn't like recommending it. It was a throwaway comment. We were hanging out a few days later. And I was like, you want to go grab a bite to eat? She's like, no, um, I, I'm fine. And I was like, wait, why are, why are you not? You need to dig a little typical Christian fasting. They try to like avoid telling you that they are. And then I was like, oh, are you fasting? She's like, yeah. I was like, why are you fasting? She's like, because you recommend I do that to help make this decision. Cool. That was really impactful yeah. to me. And it was like, oh, he, here's a woman that like, she took my spiritual advice. And that like, meant something to me. Um, so I think re- repentance and like willingness to, you know, engage and, and take spiritual advice are like two good things to look for on yeah. the like loves the Lord category. Yeah. You know, as we do this, I'm like, maybe we should do a series on dating and marriage. Maybe we should. I have a lot to say, but I'm not going to say it here. Um, and I think everyone, good advice, though. everyone would benefit from all that you have to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You might not agree, but you'll probably laugh at uh, Daniel's at thoughts on dating is some of the most. <laughs> But but you got some good thoughts. I mean, I appreciate that. Not only that. are they entertaining, they're like, I'm I'm with you. Yeah, and I'll, I'll tell you what, I've toned it down what I've said here. <laughs> so if you want to know my real thoughts, email me. I'll, I'll let you know. Uh, um, but I'll, I'll say this, uh, just to close this out. If you are married and you're wondering if you've married your soulmate and you're a Christian, yes, you have. Yeah. And I mean— repent of your categorization of soulmate but then but yes, uh, yes you've yes. married the right person yeah you've married the right person you are supposed to marry that person because you're married to them and i think sometimes um marriages it's just like you think this other person's out there so you live like that right sure oh maybe i married the wrong person and so you start living like another person is better for you out there yeah imagine how much would that just a mindset that would change if you're like no i absolutely married the right person and not I, because of what she just said or her personality or whatever it is. Or, you know, if you're a girl, if you're a woman, like whatever he just said or what he just did. But to say, I'm going to live every day like this is the person mm-hmm. I was meant to marry. I'm committed to, which is how we're supposed to marry, you know. Yeah. Live. But I, I know functionally it doesn't feel that way every day. And how much it would change? I would. Yes. And I would say the majority of cases, that's true. And then I would give the asterisk and I would say. I think scripture teaches that adultery and abandonment 
and abuse as a subcategory of abandonment are biblical grounds for divorce. And so I yeah. would say, for, yeah. for, for the, the hypothetical person listening, saying, I married a guy that's beating me. I think I did marry the wrong person. And I, I would say in that sense, yes. Yeah. Yes. And you need to get out and get to safety first. Yes. And uh, call the police. That's a good get safe. Yeah. And so, uh, the, the yeah, the only, like, I think overall we need to view, like, this is 100% the right person for me because I'm married to them. End of story. Um, I think there are things that that person can start doing, uh, adultery, abandonment, abuse, that does open it for you to say, I- I'm going to escape this. Yeah. I think that's important no, to mention. No, thanks for, no, thanks for mentioning that. It's sad that we have to m- mention it. Yeah. But it is important that we do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't want, yeah. I, the advice I gave was for generic, I mean, gener- generic. Yeah. 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 Like the way it was it is good. meant it's to be. The way it's be. supposed to be. Yeah. yeah. The way that it's supposed to be. I think most people, yeah. they use the um, soulmate thing as just this terrible excuse to just go do whatever you want. But then there is this genuine category, you know, that's just worth calling out. Yeah. No, I appreciate that. So, soulmates, two thumbs down. Uh, <laughs> Which brings us to our of the month segment. This is just super weird ending it with this. Not used to this. But we have our listener of the month today. So who is who's our listener of the month, Daniel? Our listener of the month is someone I've been calling in my head, Miss Terry. Miss Terry. Miss Terry. I'm sorry, I didn't get your last name. Uh, and it is a friend of uh, Lisa Plemons, who was a former listener of the month. And we have just heard that there is just a contingent of people in Alabama who listen to our podcast. And one of the people that I met uh, about a month back was Miss Terry, who was just so kind and uh, such so pleasant to be around. We just want to say thank you, and thank you for being a listener of the month, and thank you to that whole group. Yes, listening. we love you, Alabama. We love you. Yes, we love you, <laughs> Alabama. Uh, and we're we're grateful for you, and we are just thankful for for your, uh, for listening. Yeah, absolutely. So thanks for listening to us opine about soulmates. And, uh, we hope you have a great Thanksgiving week and, uh, we will be back soon. I'm sure with December approaching, uh, you know, we've done like three podcasts on Santa. Why why not do another, you know? So I'm sure that'll be in our future, you know, just have you changed it all in a year? I don't know. <laughs> I need to re-listen to what I said. I, you know? yeah, yeah. I, I feel like I've, I've, I've stayed the same, but I'm curious to hear about what you think <laughs> this year. I'm the constant variable in this discussion. <laughs> we will talk to you then.